Hello, and in this video tutorial, we'll be installing CodeBlocks, which is a open source cross platform C++ IDE. It also works with C and C Sharp. So let's go ahead and go to the download section and download the binary release. These are already set up and compiled. Now we're going to want the MingGW setup because that includes the GCC compiler. And so that's just basically um, the open source cross-platform compiler for uh, Windows and Linux. So go ahead and get the this version. The user version does not require admin permissions to install. So if you do not have admin permissions on your computer, go ahead and download this version. But since I'm an admin, uh, I'm also running Windows 7. Just go ahead and download from SourceForge. Let it uh, download should start, and so once that's done, go ahead and navigate to. I already have it downloaded, so that was just for demonstrations. As you can see, it's here on my desktop. Go ahead and run the installer, and it's going to ask uh, basically where do you want to install it, and make sure you click yes to the user account UAC. So go ahead and click next. I agree. Now you want to install all the plugins including the default installation. The contrib plugins that will include things like um what's it called? Uh SVV source uh version contributions. Go ahead and see it also includes the Ming GW compiler. Go ahead and click next. Install into the default program. If I'm not mistaken, the Ming GW, GW uh, compiler will be installed under the root drive, which is C. So that will be separate from the code blocks installation. Go ahead and click install. Now you're just going to wait for this to install. So might take a while. It should be fairly fast though. So after that, as soon as it's done installing, we'll be able to run code blocks. But until then, just so we can see, I do believe MingGW will eventually end up in the root drive. I've done this on another computer. I uh, also have a, in case anyone's interested, I have a C++ tutorial going on. So you could use this in conjunction. I used to use um, Eclipse, the Eclipse IDE, except that wasn't doing what I wanted it to, and so. I'm switching to code blocks and it's open source and cross platform so this version is a lot better. Okay, so as you can see we're almost done here. We're just waiting for it to extract a few more items. So as soon as this is done, you guys will see that the MingGW will be under the root drive. So, yeah. It's just now almost finished. It's about 99. Do you want to run code blocks? We'll click no for now. Go ahead, click next and finish. So, I actually did install MingGW on the root drive, whatever. Probably installed it under its, uh, under its, uh, default directory or maybe it just did it now no well whatever it's a GNU GCC compiler it's detected go ahead set it as default click OK now first time you're gonna run this it's gonna ask file associations uh, I usually just click yes associate with all C C++ file types so yep go ahead and click OK now this is the default user interface and from here we can actually go ahead and create a new hello world project just to test our installation so just go ahead click new uh, project and you have all these options so go ahead and just click console applications that will just run in a command prompt or if you're on Linux it will run on a shell so go ahead click that go ahead this is basically a uh, guide or how to do it so just go ahead click next we'll be using C++ 
We'll just call the title test uh, folder. You need to select a default folder. I just usually leave it under my documents. So just leave it there. And you'll see it will create a test.codeblocks project file. Right click next. GNU C compiler since that's the default. And go ahead and click finish. Don't mess with this for now. You'll have other debugging options if you decide to follow my tutorial in the advanced section once it's up. Go ahead and click finish. And so you'll see our project was added here. And you can see sources is basically the uh, the file where all your C code is saved. Go ahead and double click on it. So you get uh, a basic hello world prompt. So if you go ahead and select compile and run, which is this right here, or build and run, whatever, it's going to execute down here. And you will see it opens in a command prompt and it just prints out hello world and then press any key to continue. So there you go. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something new today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like if this helped you in any way, shape, or form.